Hello, 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 and welcome everybody to Amazon Music's and Rap Rotations History in the Making. For the past two weeks, we've been, you know, using this platform to amplify young black voices in the music industry that are trailblazing, making history. Um, and today I got two very young brothers who are amazing in both of their respective crafts. Um, we got my man Sway Lee and Gunna Stark. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? What's up? Fantastic. What's the deal, man? How y'all how y'all brothers feeling? I'm good. I'm cold, but I'm good. <laughs> you cold, man? Where you at in the world right now? I'm in Atlanta. It's freezing here. Okay. Right. I mean, it's Atlanta, it's a little nice down there compared to, to, to New York and New Jersey. We got a snowstorm right now, so I'm trying to stay warm myself. Sway, where you at? You in LA enjoying that lovely weather? Oh yeah, I'm in LA enjoying that bed. Look at Sway. <laughs> Look at that boy Sway. <laughs> I don't know what he do, man. What's up? <laughs> oh, nah, man, it's, 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 it's really dope to have both of y'all here. You know, um, I was doing a little bit of digging and I just was getting more in tune with the background of you brothers, but I wanted to know if you could share that with us. So Sway, you know, I know that you grew up in Tulupo, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Tulupo, uh, Mississippi? Tupelo, yeah, I grew up in Tupelo. Tupelo. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's known a bit for music, but you know, I found out that it's only an hour away from Memphis, you know, and seeing that, like, it's so much influence that happens in the South, but you know, your, your city is not, you know, put on the map so much but for you and your brother you know y'all really stamped that i wanted to know what it was like growing up there and like how you could describe the music scene a bit oh yeah it's crazy yeah now we definitely one of the most prominent faces out of mississippi right now um shit, growing up in mississippi is like it's a small town you know what i'm saying they they might not move the fast they might not get everything the fast but just like you said like they got influences from like little cities like memphis you know what i'm saying you know, Atlanta, Texas, like, you know, Alabama. It's just like, it's it's a real country city. It's like a a good city to raise your family type stuff. Small population, like 11,000. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Nah. Damn, it's only 11,000 there? <clears throat> Might be more now, like, I ain't did the research now, but when I used to live there, it was 11,000. Yeah, man, you had a lot of like, you know, humble beginnings, you know, just, when you was on your grind, you know, trying to rise to where you're at now, was it easy for you to see that? Not not having exposure, being in such a small town, or like, did you always feel like if you got in the right position, you'd be good? Yeah, I was always optimistic. Like, I ain't even care what I had to do. Like, I, I'm gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna make it happen. Like, whatever I gotta do, I'm, I know, like, I knew it was gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? Especially where I was living at, like, Tupelo, Mississippi. I already knew like what I was gonna have to do. Like I was gonna have to work 10 times harder than the next person. But that was cool. Cause that's what I already did. Even when I was at McDonald's, I work hard. Like I get on the grill, turn around, do the dishes, turn around, do the drive through, turn around, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what it is, I'm finna go hard. I'm finna put my everything into that shit and be the best. <laughs> that's you know that's so crazy. I, I like, just like to do shows and stuff. I might have to drive like an hour to go to Memphis or like, four hours to go to Atlanta and do this show. But it's going to, you know what I'm saying, it might get me 20 more fans. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm willing to do it, like, what, however long it take. I'm going to grind and hustle, like, hustle like crazy, like, whatever it take. And that's, that was just real. Gonna, um, I don't care if it happened in 20 years. I don't care if it happened in 75 years. I'm going to be on them stages singing to the masses. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> How, how's it been? Because I actually, like, you know, you haven't, like, over this past year, it hasn't been too much shows. I remember the last show I saw you at was um in Madison Square Garden, that Post Malone show, and that, that shit was crazy. You know what I mean? To see so many people um knowing your records word for word. Like, how's it been, like, with the, the whole pandemic, like, kind of taking a year back, not being able to perform on tour? Oh, yeah, I don't even, like, do music no more. Like, now, like, I'm a Wi-Fi consultant, like. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I gave the music up from the pandemic, man. I'm a Wi-Fi consultant now, so. What do you, what do you mean, you're a Wi-Fi consultant? No, I'm just, <laughs> nah, man, it's crazy. Like, it's actually crazy. Like, 
the pandemic, like, it just gave me, like, extra time. Like, so now what I'm doing is just going through all my folders, like, of all the songs I ever made on my hard drive and just getting all the songs off and just organizing them and putting them in different folders and stuff. And then, like, it's just crazy because I'm seeing how many songs I actually made. Like, all the time that I spend in the studio actually means something now because... I'm seeing like all the songs, like, and I thought it was gonna be this many songs, like, which these songs equal up to albums, you know what I'm saying? Like, just right. the albums, like, this shit crazy. Motherfucker would laugh Man. if they the songs I had, bro. Just, it's just like. Would they laugh or would they be upset because they, they want some new Sway Lee music? That's the thing. I'm even like, it's like a, it's like a mad laugh, a mad laugh, you know what I'm saying? Like, why the fuck, this shit ain't out. I be asking myself, like, damn, bro, this shit do need to be out, like, but it's all about, like, you can't just throw stuff together these days, like, especially when you care about it, you know what I'm saying? And I really care about this music, so I got to put it together properly. I feel you, I feel you. Gunna, um, yeah. I know you came up, you know, growing up in Atlanta, and I know you used to work at, like Sway said, he used to work at McDonald's, you used to work at Dick Sporting Goods. Right? Yeah, I worked at Dick Sporting Goods. I, I wasn't really, like, an employee. I was there though. I wasn't doing shit though. <laughs> so I mean, I you know, this nigga, Slay, this nigga Slay said, "I'll do. I'll be on the uh, grill, turn around, do the dishes, and then turn around and start popping." I was the opposite. I wasn't doing none of that. I was, I was in my, I was in the dressing room texting Mike Will about Slay and Jeff the whole time. Like that's what I was doing at this point because it's like having customers come up to me trying to talk, and I'm like, "Hold on, I'm sitting there testing Mike. Like, yeah, we gotta do this. We gotta do that." Like. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy as you kind of use use uh the spot as your office a bit. <laughs> I ain't had no choice. I ain't had no choice. I wasn't getting money no other way. So I really ain't had no choice. Like God, where the fuck is Not that? For you. I seen that you was um like using the anime and shit and Gundam was one of your like like one of your favorite things to watch when it came to anime. Like I, I fuck with anime a lot myself and I wanted to know like first, did you ever try to build any of those pieces before? Yeah, I got mad of them. I still got a bunch on my floor right now that I, I don't know how to build. Like, I thought I could pick it up, like, last year during the pandemic and try to build it, yeah. but I still, I like, nah. I still, Gundam? Still, yeah, the Gundam wings, the the, uh, the transforming robots, the original Transformers. The yeah, original. yeah, for a fact. Yeah. That's right. Well, did you, like, watching a lot of anime, did you ever take some of that perspective as to how you shoot? Uh, no, not really. I never even thought of it that way. That was just something I always like. I like <laughs> stuff that takes my mind off the of stuff. That takes my mind off the normal. So anime was like, yeah. I never really thought about using that into into shooting. Nah, uh-uh. I should have. It made, I, the way I even thought of that was like, I looked at a lot of your, um, like a lot of your photos and it's like a lot of ill colors. You know what I mean? Like you you, you figure out ways how to make the colors complement the photos that you shoot. So I thought that that's how you were shooting it. It's kind of crazy to know that you never even thought of it in that perspective. Oh, uh, no. Nah, uh, yeah, that's crazy. I, I guess maybe inadvertently, but yeah. I never thought of it. That so how, how how did both of y'all meet each other? Uh, I'm going to let Sway go first because it might be something completely, completely different from Oh God, damn! I met, I met, we met at the fucking two nine studios, didn't we? We met at the studio or at a show. Some we was at a studio or a show. One of one of the one of the two. Like, yeah, I know. I used to always see you at the two nine studio and cooling, and I used to think uh, Gunna did music at first, and then I was like, we we just started shooting pictures. She went on the tour and shit. Like it was just you know what I'm saying. Just locked in, like. Bro was just cool in the studio every night. Like I always seen him with the with these other man two nine and shit. Yeah, we was we was all just I don't know, it was just like a I guess like a a, a melting pot of a bunch of yeah artists and creators and shit. Yeah, just just all like being around. And Mike was like, "Yo, I got these two hard youngers, bro." And I'm like, "Where?" And like they fired. Like yeah, they fired. And then I started listening. I'm like, "Oh no, nah, these niggas is it." And then we went to like. South by Southwest and these niggas was jumping on top of cars and buildings and shit. I'm like, bro, oh hell no. Nah. It, like it's a whole new type of energy I ain't never even seen. Like did my just kick out of parties because these niggas was stumping on type of shit, coming through all stream like hoodies. Like 
like literally just running down the street, jumping on top of food trucks. I'm like, oh, these niggas is crazy. Like, it's the type of energy I need. Stay wildin', for real. Yeah. My, I mean, both, what's crazy about it is both of y'all is, is re, are still very young and y'all damn near 10 years in. Do y'all ever think about like being a decade, almost a decade into y'all, y'all careers? Yeah, I ain't like, I actually do think about that. I was just like, damn, bro. I done been in shit like seven years, like, I think it's starting to become an OG, young OG. Yeah, I, I didn't think I would, I don't know. I never thought I'd it'd be, be going this far. Uh, I don't know. I still be feeling like I'm not even supposed to be here right now. So, yeah, I just, I just, yeah, I'll just be taking shit a day at a time. I don't even be thinking about it in, in age or like, or like longevity. Well, not I think about longevity, but not like, I don't think of it in, in that way. Like, pressure on it, way. Yeah. Like just naturally going with your natural flow, just exactly. Yep. No okay. cap. What was the turn? What was the turning point for each of y'all? You know what I mean? Like I see y'all were young and y'all were just you know making it happen, just doing dope shit, trying to make a name for yourselves. But what was the turning point for each of y'all where y'all understood that damn, I actually do have a career. This shit is real. Like the turning point for me was shit, man. I made my first twenty five hundred, but. <laughs> But what? They gonna give me twenty five hundred to come through and dance and scream into the mic on stage? And I'm like, right at this time, I had never even saved up a thousand dollars. Like I couldn't even save up a thousand dollars because I, I was working minimum wage. I had an apartment, I had bills. My mama needed this, that, whatever it is. Like so, boom! I'm, I got my first club appearance, bro. That was it for me. I said, even before that though, when I put my album out with Mike Will, like when I put the whole album out, like that I constructed in the basement, a year of living in somebody else's basement, put the album out and it actually caught flames. And it was just like, boom, a couple of songs like blew up. I said, yo, yeah, we here. We ain't never going back. We can't what was go. that point for you, Gunna? Uh, A turning point? Yeah, like what was the, like the moment, like for myself, I could think about like certain moments in my life where it was like, Oh shit! Like this is this is for real. Uh, like like Sway said, making his first twenty five hundred was kind of like the thing that he saw. Like, damn, I'm actually making something out of all of this work I put in. So you know, I know that you even when you started, you still was grinding for a long time. But what was was it a check? Was it recognition? Like you selling out? Like you know, you're having a best selling book? Nah, my probably my probably turning uh, turning point was like. Uh, probably when I first had car service, I was probably about to, I don't like to drive and I don't know how to drive. So when I, you know, when you land in the airport and somebody there right. holding, holding your name. Yeah, that was my time. For sure. Nah, I, nah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So, yo, Sway, um, I know that you, you know, working with white, with Mike, with white, ah, with Mike Will, was a big part, that's basically like a foundation of your career. Like when I think about Snoopy as Dr. Dre, even Eminem has Dr. Dre. Well, Mike Will, what was his like leadership in directing you and your brother when y'all were, you know, fresh from out of Mississippi, coming to Atlanta? Like, what was that time like? Um, That shit was like, first of all, I looked up to Mike Will before I even met him. Like I listened to his music. I was like, damn, bro, what the, like, his beats like blew my mind, like the way they sounded, just the mix on them and stuff, they blew my mind. So like, I'm like, yo, I'm a fan. Like I want, you know what I'm saying? And I know like what I would do on these beats. Like I know what I would do on these beats. What my raps would do on these beats, what my energy would do on these beats. So boom, when I met him, it was like, and he was cool. He was giving me like, like all the ropes, the guidelines, like give me a like, basically giving me the whole preface of, coming into the game, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to, like, you're gonna have to move like this sometimes. Like, sometimes people are gonna try you like this. You need to, like, have this ready. Like, you need to, just like certain stuff to say in interviews even, like, you know what I'm saying? Just, just be yourself and just tell me everything. Like, the, the ropes basically before I even went into the ring. You know what I'm saying? And just like, just, be like a mentor. Like, you're like a big bro. Like, I don't look up to nobody really. Like, I don't even like see them type qualities and people like people don't even have a they don't even hold their nuts enough and just move proactive enough for me to look up to them you know what I'm saying 
this nigga Mike Will, like one of the people like really like always thinking of what's next, like always brainstorming, always just doing that type of stuff, but gonna execute at the same time. And I don't know, it's like it's just somebody I look up to, like a good a good like leader. You know what I'm saying? Well, watching your career for the past couple of years, I always seen you like kind of be yourself. I haven't really seen you step out of the box, not in a bad way. I mean, like you not doing no silly shit was basically what I'm saying. How important is it for both of y'all to stay yourselves? You know what I mean? In an in a industry where like it's really not reality based. You know, a lot of a lot of the stuff for the people that's on the outside looking in, they think it's one way and it isn't. How important is it for y'all to keep that foundation for yourselves? Oh, shit. Gotta be myself, yeah, that's what got me here anyway, cause being like these niggas in the game, especially in the field I'm in, you gonna be losing, like being like these niggas, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, always, I let my music talk, you know what I'm saying? I, I just try to be a righteous person, like do the right thing, like by people and just set a good example for my younger fans and stuff. I know they watch it, so I don't do certain things, you know what I'm saying? I don't present, I don't put certain images out there, you know what I'm saying? Certain images we face with every day anyway. I don't got to touch them topics. So I try to put out positive messages and just, you know what I'm saying, lead the people in a positive way and show by example. But yeah, I got to be myself. Like, that's what got me here. You know, switch up the format, the winning format. Same same thing, Gunner. Like, how is, like, what is that for you? Like, just maintaining and being yourself at all times. Is it difficult? Nah, it ain't never been difficult. Like, I don't know, even when, like, even when I was like, even in high school or like middle school, even just coming up being a kid, I never wanted to be nobody else. Like, you feel me? Like I like I had like idols and stuff, but like, you know, some people genuinely don't like who they are. And I ain't never dealt with that. Like I always been comfortable with being myself and being me. Like from the moment, like when I was wearing like skinny jeans and the whole school was like making fun of me like I was always comfortable with like being me I never wanted to be nobody else uh and I guess still to that day like I'm still like still very important that everybody that works with me or comes in contact with me or even like a friend or relative they all know that like I'm me like and I'm gonna be me like regardless like um, any given occasion or any given Sunday. I don't know. What what was it like the first time y'all two actually worked together, like doing a shoot? Uh, we went. I ain't gonna lie. We went to. I remember that one with the little suit. That shit was late. You said what? Where we went? Gucci suit. There where I was laying in the flowers. Oh my god! Six more. <laughs> oh, that shoot was so far. That was that, that shoot was far. That. That was like five years ago, but like, yeah, that was five years ago. That was 2016. That was five years ago. So, oh. like, I went on the road. I went on the road with Strim. We went from Atlanta to to Mississippi to Miami back to Mississippi in a 15 passenger van within the span of like three days. Like, like that, sh- that shit was crazy. Like, yeah, that run was nuts, bro. <laughs> That was probably like the first, like the very, 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 very first time that we had like, I like worked with them. Like that shit was wild. We was running and gunning for real. Yeah, we was in that. We was in the van going back and forth. Yeah. What 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 was the craziest thing that happened during that time while I was on that van? Uh, that you get that you that that is safe to say. Nothing that's going to get y'all in no trouble. That's safe to say. Like I don't like that back then. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that one, Chief. Oh yeah, probably. I'm probably just going to South by Southwest or something. <laughs> <laughs> we hit the streets and shit. Like we was literally like mobbing in the streets, just like shooting a video, like running gun, like getting like the natural interaction with people and shit. And we were just like passing out our CDs, like we passed out like a thousand CDs to like just random people. Yeah, that's another thing. Them niggas was passing out their own CDs. Like, don't nobody do that. Like, mm. niggas be too cool to pass out their CDs. Like, for real, we passed out. Niggas was passing out their own music. Like, they oh, own. Music. Dude, that shit was crazy. It blew up right after that. Like, on South by Southwest. Exactly. 
Exactly. But I mean, that what, the crazy thing about that now is like, shit, that's what, five years ago when y'all did that? The, the game is different now. It's digital. So it's like. That wasn't even you, five years ago. That was like. It wasn't? That was 2014. So what is that? 2014, okay. Seven, seven. Yeah, seven years ago. It'll be seven years ago next month. Oh, yeah, seven. Yeah, them bitches like technology switched over. Shit was fucking nuts. Like, we was right in the middle of the wave, like the, the CD age and the. Uh, in the digital age, like we right in the middle. We was right in the middle of the transition. Yeah, definitely in the middle of the transition. For real. That's crazy. Hey Gunner, has your has your parents' perspective changed on you? I know I, I seen something where you were saying like they wasn't really taking it serious when you first got into it. Like, has that changed? Uh yeah. I guess in a way. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not really I don't know. I hope so. I would hope. Yeah. Oh. Right. I mean, yo, so Sway, like, with you making, like, you beat yourself out for number one. You did it solo and you did it in a group. Like, how does that feel to set that kind of record? You know what I mean? I don't think it's been done again, but how does it feel to be that record holder? That shit actually crazy for real, for real. Like, it's just like, can't nobody say that it happened for no reason other than it's great music. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you got that record. You that's a record that you hold. I didn't even know that. That's not in this world. Like, what? Which one? Yeah, having a number one, a number one as an artist, a solo artist, and a number one as a yeah, Sunrise Nigga, group. What the fuck, bro? That's crazy. I never knew that. For real shit. <laughs> you know that, but you don't realize it until somebody puts it in writing. Like, mm hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. So I mean, I guess I guess both both of y'all is just like living in real time. Like y'all y'all not even looking at the the accolades that y'all racking up. That's crazy. I never even knew that. Bro, now niggas is doing it right now. Like we going crazy in the fucking world. Like <laughs> our brands are getting set in stone. Like every day, nigga doing more and more shit. Like I feel like I ain't even did like everything. Like really even showed the world all my music yet. Though. I ain't even like you know what I'm saying. I got like. Projects on checks to drop. <laughs> How, really? How's that filtering process though? Because you got so much music, and you know, are you one of those artists that you fall in love with every every record that you make? So how's that process of, of elimination? Banging. So if it don't go on one album, it's gonna go on an album, three albums after that, or five albums after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I gotta get this shit out because now it's just like I'm a fucking pass away in all my music. Gonna be not fucking out, and I won't even be able to drop this much music unless I start dropping it now. So it's just like, yeah, I got I got help too. It's me looking through the music, it's like all oh, my homies helping me and shit. Really? So I mean, when you when you made that first record, was a party animal like? <laughs> <laughs> what made you <laughs> that, that was like very 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 early you know what i mean very very early like was it just something to do to pass time to have fun you know being a young kid down south or was it like you really seeing yourself being a superstar one day yeah like i saw myself definitely like being successful with the shit like i didn't even know what being a superstar was i thought it just meant seeing on the stage you know what i'm saying but i just wanted to like sing outside for people at the park that's what I want to do. Sing outside for people at the park. You know what I'm saying? I'm from, like, that's all I'm going to be doing is singing outside for people at the parks and shit. You feel me? So it's like, you think about, you think about superstardom, you know what I'm saying? And you just have this, this, this thing you imagine, you know what I'm saying? Because once you're really doing it, it's like, it's nothing like what you imagine. It's so much more who it, you know what I'm saying? Like so many more perks, so many more side bags, so many more headaches, so many more, you know, vacations. Like it's just something you can't even imagine that you get it and you just, but you know it's gonna, you know it's gonna make you light up. That's one thing, you know it's gonna make you feel good. You know it's gonna put pay your bills and you know it's just gonna make people happy and you know it's gonna make yourself happy. So yeah, like it's just like, you gotta connect the dots. 
That's real. Gunna, um, I want to know, like, what's some of the, the, the challenges that you yourself as a young Black photographer have faced, like, you know, trying to get into the fashion world, doing campaigns, you know, aside from just doing the music? Have people tried to put you in a box just because of where you kind of built yourself at? Man, hell yeah, they put me in a box. Like, hell yeah, I'm still in a box, still trying to break out of box. Like, I, I, I guess that's a challenge, but uh, it's like a challenge and a blessing at the same way, because it's still something like that I love to do. But, um, you know, just like, it's just almost like when that lady told LeBron, like, shut up and dribble, like, you feel me? It's just like, damn, it's like, oh, you gonna look at me as like, it's all, I'm just like one dimensional, like, it's kind of like fucked up, like, you know what I mean? It's like the, the same, not the same, like, it's it's not the same, but it's somewhat in like the same way, like challenges that like I, I like go through. But I mean, it ain't life without challenges. Like ain't nobody said this shit was gonna be easy. So, yeah. I mean, nothing Nothing that comes easy doesn't really get appreciated too much anyway. I want to know, Sway, like, both for both of y'all, like, what's some of the things that, like, people from the older generations, like, have, has the older generation started paying it forward now when they see that you're proven? Because I remember, Sway, like, in the beginning of your career, a lot of people think that hip-hop is only one thing. And you were able to, like, do great in hip-hop and then do crossover shit as well. But they tried to box you in very, very early. Like, talk to me a little bit about, like, that time. Did you ever get discouraged when you was younger about people saying what you ain't or what your brother ain't? And, Gunner, did you feel that same thing as far as being a photographer? I never felt like that. Like, I, I noticed, like, I heard it and I digested it in my head. And I was like, I just laughed at it, you know? And I laughed at it because I already had 30 songs done. And I know what the type of songs were. And, no, and the songs that I had out weren't even my best songs. So I'm just looking at it and laughing and notice, noticing the mentality of the world. They literally make up a scenario in their head and run with it. Or they might have an opinion at that second and blurt it out. It just comes out. They can't even keep it in their fucking mouth. They just want to say it, say the opinion. Then later when the real happens and re reality happens, they end up being wrong and it's just like they look stupid. You know what I'm saying? That's what you got to do. You got to make them look stupid. They say, man, he's only going to get one platinum plaque. You say, all right, cool. Boom, you pop out with three platinum plaques. Now, what the fuck was you saying? Now, shut up and go put your face in the corner. You know what I'm saying? This is what I realized. Like, people don't even know you. And they, the internet just lets them do this right here all day long. Like, whatever they're feeling. Oh, his shirt's too tight. Oh, those diamonds are shining, but, man, Lil Wayne's are bigger. <laughs> oh, look at those Cartiers. I saw some better ones in blue. Like, you know what I'm saying? These are nice Cartiers, like whatever it is. Like, <laughs> like the internet gives people the power to speak on whatever they feel and just and write it and send it and try to get, get the message to you. You know what I'm saying? They might love what you're doing and feel like, damn, I could have been doing that and want to bring you down. Somebody could be having the worst life in the world by choice or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And just not like the way you going and want to type this message. You're stuck. Then banging your song, dancing to your song. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. Like, so whatever it is, like you can't just let those type of opinions or incredible opinions influence you or affect you or not take you out your element type shit. Wanted to know, like y'all, what y'all like? Y'all not older guys, but as y'all get older, do you feel like a responsibility to pay it forward for the younger guys that's coming up watching y'all? For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I try to give out as much information as possible because I ain't had nobody to give me no kind of information. I didn't, I didn't go to school. I didn't intern under nobody. Like, Gunner, you got ten kids. <laughs> Oh God, bro, it's, bro, you inspire so many people. That's the thing too, like you don't, like when you do it like that, great things, like you don't even gotta pay it forward, you automatically paying it forward because people just modeling themselves after you. You know what I'm saying? So like you naturally paying it forward too, that shit crazy. Yeah, yeah thank you bro. Like they look, the cameras you get and everything, bro, I swear to God, they try to go through, like literally I had a couple of them, like they come to me, they're like, man, I just love Gunner Style. Like I look up to Gunner Style, like, 
I'm like, for sure, like, okay, like, they want to literally like follow your footsteps. That should be crazy. Appreciate you, bro. No cap. Appreciate that. No shit. Cap. How important is the ownership aspect of this conversation? Then, you know, because because you you both have talents, it's people that want to try to get in and see what they could get out of you. How important is it to be creatively owning your own shit and business-wise? Uh, oh, yeah. Nah, let's, nah, so you can go. You can go. I'm saying, I just let my shit speak for itself. Like, if they yeah, get... That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah, if they give you flowers, they give you flowers. But it's like, you can just, you just got to keep hitting them with great shit. And then just, yeah. Yeah. They can give you flowers, give you credit, or they can just give it to the next man that copies you. You know what I'm saying? The real ones know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gonna how um when shooting an artist, you know what I mean? If you and the artist may not be seeing eye to eye, how is it getting through that? Uh, would you believe me if I said that's never happened? <laughs> I can see I can see that being possible. Absolutely. Like over like the past like three three years, I only work with people I got relationships with. Like so I I I've I've, I've weeded out my index book and found the most genuine people that I know in my life. So I mean, we don't really don't so if I go into the shoe with them, we don't never not see eye to eye. Or never not yeah, not see eye to eye. I think I said that right. Yeah. I ain't never had that happen to me, though. Because they trust they trust me enough for, for them to even ask me to shoot with them in the first place. Yeah, they already know like what you do. Yeah. I ain't never had that though. Yeah. I mean shit, that's that's very fortunate. Um switching gears a bit, I wanted to know, like, you know, both you brothers are from the south and we all see what's going on in this country and everything. Not to get too too deep, but like how is that resonated with y'all you know some of the things that you see transpire especially you sway being from mississippi me growing up i seen the movie mississippi burning it made me scared to visit my family down south or to go to mississippi like how has that been for you um one thing i noticed like being in mississippi like growing up like the new generation like you know they ain't really like that like it's mostly like the older crowd trying to keep traditional values in mississippi and shit like that but you know the kids, like the younger, the younger generation, like we always get along, got along for the most part. Like I feel like that the younger, like the younger kids wanted to beat that whole stereotype, like and show people that it was different, and they understood like it was different. Times were different, so you know what I'm saying. We came together for the most part. Like of course you had the people that like give them certain looks, like you know what I'm saying. Like what are you doing here? Like type shit. Like you know what I'm saying. Like just make you try to make you feel out of place type stuff, like, or make you feel a little different. You know what I'm saying? But that type of stuff come out of just lack of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Lack of understanding. Like, you don't judge nobody after color their skin. You judge people off their character that type of stuff. So people that think like that, man, they just, it's just, something ain't clicking in their head, bro. And they just limiting themselves. You feel me? Cause even growing up, like as an innocent kid, you, you like if you was on the playground, you gonna play with all the kids. You're not gonna say, "Oh, black kid, oh white kid." You know what I'm saying? When you're innocent and pure, you play with everybody. You play with all the kids. It's just like hatred is really like taught and you know instilled upon the kids and shit. Like so, like we just like in Mississippi, like we just move past the racism, we we were aware of it, but it wasn't like, oh, you can't go here. Like, hell no, nah. like we cool and like, you know, so everybody coming together, we having fun together, living life together. Gunner, could you add to that? What was, the, what was the question again? Basically, you know, just growing up in the South, you know, you guys deal with racism, especially racism in this country, a different way than I'll say, you know, maybe people from the North, me being from New York, I wanted to know, has that like affected you in life? Nah, not really. You said with like everything that's been like going on? In the country, yeah. Like everything that's going on in the country and how people are being treated, et cetera. Uh, 
I ain't gonna lie, being from the South and seeing all the stuff that's been going on, like I just been buying more guns, really. That's about it. <laughs> I don't know. Like I feel you. Well, has has for both of y'all arts, has have you seen like your art kind of bridge the gaps between a lot of people who may not see eye to eye. Like, I mean, being at a, a Ray Shrummer concert, seeing Sway Lee, you know, at Post Malone, I saw uh, at Post Malone's concert, I seen every type of fan in that crowd. I was sitting like three three um, rows from the stage. So I seen every type of person in Gunner, you know, a lot of people consume like your, your, your art, you know, in the space of it being connected to the music. Has your arts kind of diffused a lot of tension when y'all are out? Yeah. Like any racism, yeah. I, I, I yeah, I, I would hope it, it, it brings people together. I know when I do my shows, I see uh different kinds of people. Like, I even if I like just not even being as far as like an America problem, like, even like if I release something to the world for uh for someone to buy it, like, and I'll see them like posting it, it'll be like blah blah blah, and they live in. Russia are, you know, like, like, you know, just somewhere like, and you wouldn't even think like, damn, like this person, like this person all the way over here on this side of the earth is even thinking about me, but they can also have a conversation with somebody that lives five minutes from me because they both love, like, you know, the same, the same shit. Gotcha. Yeah, so I, hope, I hope it is like bringing, like, yeah. Bringing people together. Was that a hey, sway? What, what did you feel like with making like the record Sunflower? Because I seen like that's not you know that's such a massive record. You know what I mean? Like that's such a massive record. Did you see how many and it being on a Spider Man soundtrack? Did you see it touch like all types of people that you didn't know were fans of you prior? Hell yeah, that shit, man. Sunflower into racism, like Sunflower. I feel like Sunflower is just it's like all the kids' favorite song, like. Scientific, it's something scientific about them notes, bro. Like, mm. I tapped into that shit. Like, I really tapped into that shit. Like, that cadence and that note, it's for the kids, bro. It's for, it sounds like an actual sunflower, for real. Like, oh, God, it sounds like a beautiful, bright sunflower day. Like, exactly what it sounds like. That shit crazy. Kids be uh, lifted off that, like, too young to talk, like, First talking, like, that shit touches their soul. Like, I need to do that about five more times, and I'm going to have, nigga, I'm going to be Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. I do that two or three more times, close to, the, oh, my God, I'm going to have the whole world sold. So, Mark, so, right, so when you make those type of records, because that's a collab, then Unforgettable is a collab. You know, people was always like, why he keep giving the biggest records to other people? Like, do you feel like that time is going to come a little? I mean, people respect your shit, but do you feel like the time is going to come with all these other records you got stashed in the in the um in the hard drive or the next project? It's just like it's going to keep happening over and over, like because I'm going to keep dropping and I'm going to keep putting projects together and keep making music. So yeah, it's like it's something that's going to keep happening, like because I'm staying focused, I'm staying in the studio. I don't leave the studio; I live there every day. So it's just like. It's not gonna stop no time soon. Like me putting out good quality music. I'm passionate about my music. So I'm gonna be putting out these tight records. Like when I make a song and it, and it feel like Sunflower and it feel like Unforgettable, I know it. I'm just like, yo, this shit gotta go to the people right now. Right fucking now. So. Hey Gunna, I wanted to know like, do you have like any lost, ver any lost tapes? You know how certain artists have like archive music that they never put out and later on they do put out? Do you have any archive like photos or shoots that people haven't seen that one day you will release? Hell yeah, and probably not. Um I don't even like sharing stuff with the world like now that it is like uh, but everybody got archives like I probably got I got so much stuff that like I just scrapped like I don't know. I live, I shoot all the time. Like I did a shoot last night like I just do shoots all the time. It's still my my choice if I want to share it with people. But I mean, I don't know if I die, somebody finds my hard drive. Like, I don't know. Then what? What then? What did somebody auction off? What was it? A Wu Tang hard drive or a CD? 
the, it was the it was the Wu Tang album that nobody ever heard. They they sold it for two million dollars. I think it was. I think it ended up getting up higher than that. Yeah, when I die, I'm gonna do that. A hard drive. Hard drive. You know well, saying? I mean, you have somebody do it for you, right? Yeah, somebody gonna do this. Somebody gonna sell a few of these stacks of them, and they can take it. They can figure out what they want to do with it. Stacks on deck, anytime. I, <laughs> nah, I feel you. I feel you. Well. You know, I want to get to, you know, we got some fan questions that people have sent in for y'all. And I want to get to some of the fan questions because we want to definitely want to see what people are thinking having y'all on this platform today. So um, the first one. Shout out to the game. Is, huh? Shout out to the fans. Yeah, <laughs> much love to the fans. The first one is coming from Talk to talk to Him. Talk to Him Khan. It is, will we get another Ray Shrummer album? Hell yeah. We definitely need another race from around. Like, it's a thing. Like, we two different people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Me and Jim. All right. And he doing he doing life. Like, I'm just doing what I do in life. I've been working on, like, my project. You know what I'm saying? My boy Jim just had a baby. You know what I'm saying? He got real family. All right. So, of course, though, like, when you build something as big as Ray Shrimmer, like, and just have that many fans, and just that many, like, moments, you can't just you can't just put it to a cease. Like, you gotta keep that shit going. Like Ray Shrimmer, May Swaley, you know what I'm saying? Mm. No, that's important. That's important. That's important. All right, so we're gonna get to the second one. Which is from Sway K Seven. Question for Sway: When is the when is the album coming? Come on, give us a hit. I ain't gonna lie, I'm thinking about just like the way things are going right now. I'm thinking about just maybe dropping like March. That March. soon? Realistically, yeah, it's looking like March. But not like mm. that I album though. Just like EP. Not out. Just just a I'm gonna drop like like a two, three pack. Like like a six pack, like two six packs. You know okay. what I'm saying? Six pack, seven pack, you know what I'm saying? Like crazy. It's gonna hit like an album though. Like it's gonna feel like an album, like it's shit crazy. Gotcha. All right, we're gonna go to the third question. It's from Malad seven eight. I mean seven five eight. Sway Lee, you've been in the game for a long for, for long, and you've had multiple major hits. But these days, some of your newer songs haven't been hitting like your features. Do you have any opinions on this? Hey yo, tell man, hey yo yo, that ain't even cool, bro. Hey, tell him I said, man, I need to go back and listen, bro. <laughs> Gadget, gadget. All yeah. right, Gunner, I'm this next one. Press you, it. You got, you got something you want to add? Feel on me. Maybe they do got to go back and listen up from a different perspective. Cause like, everything I put out, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That shit be slapping, bro. I be listening to that shit like, what the fuck was I on? This was a good night in the studio. So like, it's like, yo, I, hey, for mm -hmm. a different vibe. Like they got to listen to it on a different vibe. You got to catch it at the right time. And it's not- I ain't like, gonna front the first, the first time I heard you, like the first time I heard y'all, I I got it, but I didn't. But when I saw you live, when I saw y'all niggas live, you and your brother live, I was like, oh nah, they got it. Like, I think sometimes it's an audio experience versus a live experience. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, maybe they gotta see the whole picture. If they don't get the music just alone, the production like alone, because what song is they talking about? Because I only got about three songs out solo, and they all slap reality check slap. Dance like no one's watching slap. Matter of fact, sexy slap. Fucking won't be late, Drake slap. Like it's just like some people ain't used to change, so they gotta like warm up into it. Like they if it had if the same song had Ray Shrimmer on it, they'd be like, oh I love this song. If the same song said the baby or whoever their favorite rapper is, you know what I'm saying? They'll love this song. It's just like you gotta don't stop overthinking the music and just listen to the music. Like a lot of people overthink the music. Like, motherfucker missed the whole song just because some in the intro. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 
Just listen to the music with open ears and don't try to dissect it too much. Just listen to it for the vibe of the music. That's it. Okay. Gunner, these next couple of drinks are for you. Um, this one is from Mark Casabian. Casbian, I guess. Um, what made you want to be a photographer? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. None, it's not no really like given like moment. Uh, I don't know. I just, I was playing with a camera and then I just, I taught myself how to use it. And then I, I just, yeah, I, I just went from there and just kept using it and just kept trying to grow from it, still trying to grow from it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I never just woke up and was like, yeah, I want to be a photographer. I just kind of like fell into it in a way. Gotcha. All right. So Vamp Season wants to know what's Gunner's favorite shoot and with who? Uh, my favorite shoot. <laughs> my favorite shoot. Oh, I did. I did a shoot in the yeah, first time I ever went to Tokyo. Oh. <laughs> Y'all got to go back and see. So they got to see that photo of you laying in the flowers, bro. Because, like, this nigga had on a full Gucci outfit. Like, I forgot. Flowers again. Was it like a, it looked, it kind of looked like velvet, right? I got to say velvet, say velvet. I don't know, I'm about to show you. Bring that joint up right quick. It like, it had, it had like plus signs on it. Bro, this nigga had on a fucking, like, and he just laid out in the middle. We was in the, we was in front of Lennox Mall. Like, it wasn't even like we was like, Wait, 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 wait. You did, you, y'all shot that in front of Lennox? Yeah. It's like by this building. Yes, we was oh, just right. running, we was just running around outside, just shooting, like, for this magazine. Hold on, let me find you. For real running again. When you said, when you said in front of Lennox, I'm thinking about, like, when you first walk in by where Nike is at. Basically. Over there? Shit. bro. Look at this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, what a one. So wonder- was that one of your... Was that your favorite one? Or one of your favorites? Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Damn, I gotta find the one that you laying down. Like this shit. With the flowers, that shit was cold. So you see the flowers right next to right next to this, right? Right next to him? You see it? Right. Yeah. This right. nigga he just laid out flat in the, yeah, just pulled up. He he just laid out flat in the Gucci suit. Can we do the shoot? Yeah. Wait, did we shoot black beetles out there? I don't know. It probably was. I think so. That just makes this even more crazy if y'all did shoot Black Beatles that day. Y'all probably did. That's probably why y'all was in Atlanta. Drip that. All right. I want to get to the to the next next question. Keep it rolling for a second. Um Irwin Awudin uh, asks, how many how many war zone wins do you have, then? Oh, yo, Sway, I ain't know you play war zone, bro. Like, hey, what the fuck? You know, see what's going on. Like, I'm on the shit right now. Like, how many how many war zone wins do you have, Lennon? I got 290 and I'm really I didn't know you play war zone, bro. I'm on the shit. Really wacky shit. Like 290. 290? Yeah. 290. Right. So you on war zone? Or which y'all which y'all on y'all PS5 or Xbox? I'm on PC. Black Oak. Oh. Back in the day, like I used to play this shit way back in the day. I just got back on it though, like now with the PS5. Like I be man, me and my boy, like we be sniping shit. Like I just seen you won yesterday and I seen it. I said, wait, Sway play Warzone. Like, but we got like three wins yesterday, like me, Monty, King, and uh John. We be straight. Man, head tapping. I ain't know that. I did not know that, bro. I'm on it right now. That's why I'm about as soon as we finish with this, I'm playing and I'm sitting. <laughs> I had the controller. You on right? PC? You not you not playing when you on PC? PC ain't no joke. Yeah, I'm really wacky shit. Like, really <laughs> that's hard. I'm getting right, my... uh, crazy though. It's so fun. You gonna, you gonna get on PC too, Sway? Nah, I'll be I'll be on the uh, PS5 right there. We gotta get you the PC, okay. bro. We gotta get you the PC. You have to. Everybody right? keep telling me about them PCs, man. Uh, this is like a stack, right? I mean, for a starter one, but like, if you need like a really, really, really fire PC, you're probably gonna end up paying like eighteen hundred two racks. Like, 
It's faster or something? Like, what's the difference? It's way faster, bro. Your frames is faster. You see more. You just, bro, I'll, I'll show That's you. That's like the frame rate is, the frame rate is crazy. Frame rate. You only get 60 frames on the console. So, like, I'm playing at, like, 220. So, if you come around the corner, I'm, I'm going to see every movement that you make before you, before you even notice that I'm right in front of you. Because I can see, I can see faster. Like, I can see triple the top. At, at PC, P- PC is compatible with everything, right? You can everything. play against anybody. Every, everything. Right. You can play any game. So now you, buy, you got me about to buy a damn PC now. Yo, I'm ready to get on that, on that PC gun. No cap. I'm going to send you a PC to get it, bro. And I'd be like, yo, how the fuck can you hit me that quick? Like, bro, because he's on PC, bro. Trust me. That's that's what I'm telling you. What, what, other, what, what other games you on, Gunner? You, you just, it's only Warzone? You ain't on no other games? Uh, I'm amazing at 2K. Amazing. Uh, wait, which what you playing? Are you playing you playing the park or I'm talking about like head up or you just playing head no, up? I just pick a team. Like I just have people pick me a team and I just play like I just put up I put up 65 with Steph yesterday on Hall of Fame on five minute quarters. Yes, I put up 65. Somebody had the Nets whoop they ass. Like mm. I, yeah, 65. Wait, you on 2K? Mm. Nah, I suck at 2K. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I play. I only played 2K a couple of times. Like one time, I played Kodak Black. Like right for it. Like when we were shooting real chill video. This was like my first time playing 2K since I was a kid, bro. I almost beat that nigga. I only lost by one point. Like no cap. <laughs> Fresh on the sticks. Like. All right. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get a, a another a few more cup. Uh, just a few more fan questions in because we got a few left. Um. I'm a natural game. It's right. next one. Next one is from. Krypton wants to know, will Gunna bring out his own film? Showing love from Germany. See that wasn't, wasn't we, I just talked about that earlier. Like you in Germany, like that's crazy. Like I didn't even been there. Like I just said that. And hell yeah, I'm coming out with my own film. It's take a lot more time than people think that it's gonna take. It might be this year, it might be next year, but I will come out with my own film. Like film that they can like put in their cameras? Yeah. Look at look at Sway's face. All right. Yeah. You heard that Sway looked like he heard that 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 the money button as soon as he said that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's tough. Like mm-hmm. with like certain like filters on them or something like. Nah, it, nah, it's just film. Like you can make you can make film with filters. Like they had those. Like you could buy a film that comes with like flowers all over it when you shoot. Like, yeah. Players and shit. I seen that shit. Yeah, you can you can make film like that, but nah, I don't, since I don't ever use that, I'm gonna try and make it like how film it is. I already use like color film, black film. Like, it's gonna take some time, but yeah, for sure I'm coming out with my own film. He's gonna like put the best like mix on it. Yeah, it takes a lot of time though. It takes, it's, it's very expensive. I'm trying to see if I'm going Shark Tank to pitch this, but you are gonna get it right. Dang. Okay. We got another one. Um, this next one is from B Life Light Two. Any more projects with Mike Will coming? Hell yeah! What the freak? You know, people don't see out for a while, so they probably just assuming all types of the wrong stuff. Oh yeah, just want to know, get some clarity. Yeah, Mike, man, we're gonna be making music. The people that I made music with in, right now, these are the people I'm gonna be making music with. So 85, 90, you feel me? This is the way it gets the bag rolling. This is what gets the money flowing. This is what made me. Like, so this is who I'm, this is home base. Like, me. 85, 90. So, Sway, so, so you see yourself doing a damn uh, residency one day? I got a residency in Vegas right now. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. But Rona is just so fucking lame. <laughs> Rona just messed that up, man. I would, man, I, bruh, when I was on tour, my next show was in Vegas. Like me and Post Malone was on tour. I had a um, res- residency in Vegas. I was fucking literally the next day. We was about to go to Vegas, about to turn up crazy. That was the last show I seen. That was like the last show before shit. Y'all probably had the last show before shit got like real. And, and niggas was like, nah. That's the last. Fuck the shows. That's definitely the last show I went to. Me, me and my wife went to to Madison Square Garden. And she she know about you, but she not didn't really know too much about Post Malone. And she was like, "Oh, not because you came out twice on the show." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was like that run was insane. That was the last show to end all shows. Yeah, they was like 
Like literally, we was going like going at it with the NBA players, like because they had the games and all the auditoriums that we performed at. So boom, we already knew they was about to cut that shit like short. Like once we had, once we got to the city and it was like, it was supposed to be a game in the city. Like literally right after we came, it was supposed to be a game a day for. So every time the game got canceled. So we was like, oh, for sure they ain't letting us rock. <laughs> we ain't rocking. And then like, for sure the show, show was canceled that day. Like every time, like this shit was just nuts, bro. All right, this is my last, this is the last fan question I'm gonna give. It's from Sims 300 underscore. They want to know what are y'all advices for the youth and what kept y'all creating even with all the success? Um, I mean, I don't even, I don't, I, mm, I always get that feeling like I'm not, not done yet. So, and I like what I do. So, I mean, I'm just naturally, I'm just gonna, I just, gonna create like I don't really see like a stopping point uh like Sway just said he's trying to be 90 making music like mm -hmm. like 90 performing like they trying to be like Dolly Parton I had Sway World like you know like amusement park like that's mm -hmm. just actually this is actually like how we is like we just want to just keep going like mm -hmm. always thinking about what's next like what like what, what the fuck we gotta do next like I bet Mm-hmm. And closing the gap between like type stuff. Like I always been the type of person like stay out of the mystery. Like wait, what's the question again? Tell me what the question was. The question was, um Top what up. was what, what advice you have for the youth and what keeps you creative with even with the success you've got? Oh yeah, man. Boom, like it's really like stay out the mystery. Like, man, I didn't been in like one of the worst points of my life, like the lowest points of my life. I was like, this shit is bad. Like, this shit is bad. Like, but then I was there. I wasn't like, it's the end of the world. Like, nigga, I'm gonna nigga ain't shit. Like, no, nigga. I'm like, it shit gotta get better. Like, I'm right here. I'm so low. Like, anything, any step up is a come up. Like, so I'm like, I'm just doing it a thousand times. Climbing the stairs. And it's motherfucking, bro, this, it might be 60 flights of stairs you gotta climb, but hey, it's it's interesting, it's your journey, it's what's gonna create you, like the ups and downs, like all these trials and tribulations, these gonna make you the, the great that you're gonna become, that you already are, the great that's inside you, it's gonna bring it out of you. So yeah, just stay optimistic, you know what I'm saying? Stay working, stay focused, like don't, don't get sidetracked from your goal, like that's the thing, like every second, every minute counts that you're putting towards your goal, like. So yeah, stay at it. Damn, so you got me feeling inspired today. Hmm? You're sitting at home. Like I can make some shit happen. You're sitting at home. <laughs> <laughs> Your life's passing. Yeah, man. All right. Now that's so funny. Well, but I just want to tell y'all we about to we about to get up out of here. But I just want to thank you, Sway Lee. I want to thank you, Gunner. You know, today's been very insightful. I, I really appreciate having y'all on History man. in the Making. You know, we we're doing this. And we, we've created this platform so that we can help amplify your voices, you know, so that the younger ones coming up under you and the ones that might be feeling a little discouraged and trying to figure out themselves can look at this and be like, damn, they did it. Maybe I could do it. So again, yeah. thank you brothers for coming out. Thank you for putting on for your cities. And just want to say peace, y'all. Thank, thank you for being the perfect moderator. Oh God, you go crazy. That's a like, incredible interview. Gonna I ain't we ain't have to say one mic, not one time. You a great moderator. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't on the house we ain't on the clubhouse I ain't gonna do that I'm gonna let y'all talk we ever do this again it's gonna be the same thing or better I appreciate y'all love gang gonna no doubt no doubt love y'all love get in that war zone nigga <laughs>